ANC President Sir Ramaphosa says his birthday wish is a stronger focus on job creation for the youth. He was delivering the Peter Mukaba Memorial Lecture in Pulukwane this afternoon, but it was not without its drama as the Youth League protested over accreditation. The event is part of the ANC's build up to its 110th anniversary celebrations tomorrow. ENC reporter Pule uh, Lichiti Jones joins us now from uh, Pulukwane where the lecture is taking place. Pule, always a pleasure speaking to you. So, this lecture took place out side of uh, the designated venue because of certain issues with accreditation. We'll get there in a moment. But talk to us a little bit about what happened exactly. Lira started as a day where we thought um, would be, you know, quite organized um, compared to what had happened yesterday with the ANC Women's League um, Memorial Lecture. Um, but what we saw today is that when we arrived here early, around half past 12, um, we witnessed that there was some sort of commotion happening outside, particularly with some of the ANC uh, Youth League members and supporters who were saying that there were some few individuals who were given uh, tags and being accredited to go inside, while others were just left outside to stand and that actually angered them which then led to a fight which broke up between some of the supporters and of course the um, 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 the security personals that were here and I can say that you know to a certain degree there was some sort of um, this organization uh, this, this organization faith whereby the media at, at first was told to get accreditation when we were not um, you know um, made aware about it just days before and hours before. We then went to the center where we were supposed to be accredited. Upon arrival, we were told not in the system. That means we had to come back here to the venue and then we were then allowed in. So that's, what, that's the chaos that was um, you know, caused there. And actually, when, when that happened, the, the, the youth the league leadership had to then go into a crisis meeting with the Deputy, with Deputy Minister of Security, Zizikot, to try and find a way forward as to how they can accommodate everybody because we're being told this venue only um, accommodates around 580 people and from there onwards that that's that's what happens the event then took place well Pule, I must say that it sounds as though this lead up to the January 8th statement was even a surprise to the African National Congress in that yesterday we had a similar incident where the president had to walk out of that uh, lecture as well Lillian Goy lecture that was uh, scheduled now we've got an issue with accreditation for this Peter Mukaba lecture. We had to resort to speaking outside. It's like we, the ANC did not know that there would be a January 8th statement at subsequent events leading up to that moment. Where is the problem exactly at this point? Is it a communication thing? Is it a ground forces issue? Is it an issue within the divisiveness? What's the problem? <laughs> Well, there seems to be an issue of communication and that there wasn't a lot of, you know, information that was actually peddled out to say what will be a way forward. But Faith, you know, we've been on the ground, not only me alone, but as a team. And I really want to bring in our senior reporters from Antlakoki, who was also inside, who actually um, witnessed what happened inside. Um, Spamanda, thank you very much for joining me this time around. Now, I just want to find out as to while we were outside, we saw there was a lot of commotion that took place and you were inside when it was quiet. Did you get a sense of what took place from the crisis meeting because you were actually um, next to the meeting where the event was supposed to take place? Before I answer that question, my colleague, allow me to tell you that I've just tried now to ask ANC President Cyril Ramaphosa for his reaction on the calls and the chants by members of the ANC Youth League that are calling for him to get a second term during this year's elective conference well he has flatly ignored me he said well I can't hear your question I asked him three times are you available we have seen a pattern ever since he arrived here in Lipopo in Sekukune region the regional secretary pronounced that they are endorsing Sir Ramaphosa for a second term the Waterberg region has pronounced that they are endorsing him for a second term some members of the structureless quote unquote ANC Youth League are calling for him to get a second term interestingly he has pleaded with them. He has urged them to revive the ANC Youth League that he says has been an embarrassment over a number of years. The ANC Youth League doesn't have structures and branches. It's true for its uh, uh, elective conference. But about this gathering as a whole, inside we got a sense that there was not proper coordination for this event here, the Memorial Lecture. 
One, it was meant to be at Lebua Homo Civic Center, where the cancelled Lilian Ngoi Memorial Lecture was set to take place yesterday. It was cancelled. The Peter Mokaba Memorial Lecture was meant initially to be convened or to be delivered there. It was changed and brought in here. But due to the increasing number of ANC Youth League members who wanted to be inside, it had to be done outdoors after commotion and scaffold. So inside you got a sense that yes, this is an ANC Youth League that is trying to rebuild, to revive, but there are tensions within the ANC Youth League. Some of the members who were saying they are not being allowed inside, they are alleging that it was true or because of factional reasons. Well, Sipa, just before I throw it back to Faith, um, the dynamics of the you know, political developments in this province, um, the Deputy Chairperson as well, Florence Rizzolani, agreeing that the President uh, should get a second term. What are we also um, getting on the ground? Because we get a sense of feeling that there are those who are also endorsing the Premier, Stanley Matawata, to be the next Chairperson of the ANC as well. Are you aware about some of these um, rumours that are, have, are taking place on the ground as well? Luckily for me, yesterday I was able to put it to him, Stan Matabata, to ask him the question directly. There are those who are calling for you to become the national chair. Are you available? He said, well, he gave me a standard response, a generic response that all ANC politicians give. They say everywhere the ANC deploys me, I will go. If they say I must become a branch chairperson, a branch secretary, I'll take that. I interpreted that to mean that he's available for deployment. And I asked Ronald Lamola today, there are those who are calling for Ronald Lamola by the way to become the deputy president of the ANC. They are pushing for the general, generational mix. They are calling on young leaders to ascend and take over power in the ANC. Ronald Lamula saying he supports the idea of generational mix when it comes to leadership, saying it's time for young people to take over. So we are in a period which we can call a silly season for the ANC, you know. Some people will say it's too early to talk about this, but Stan Matabata did not deny that he will avail himself for election in the top six of the ANC. President Ramaphosa here did not deny and did not tell these people who are calling for him to get a second term that the time has not come for nominations to be open. Usually the ANC will say it's too early, wait for the processes to unfold, let the structures nominate. He has not told any of the structures that have called for him to get a second term that do not jump the gun, it's too early. A sign that he's going for a second term. So it's going to be an interesting one to see. So, Gorgi, I know you have to go to the Gala dinner. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, sir. Right, that's my colleague, senior reporter, Sipaman Gorgi. Faith, he just got a, an inside detail of, of, apart from what happened here today, what are also the political dynamics in the province whereby we have been told that, you know, the president has now got a political grip in terms of having the backing of most of these provincial leaders here in Limpopo, such as how my colleague has described it. But one thing in particular, Faith, you know, um, he, in the morning we spoke to the premier as well, and, you know, he was just saying, look, um, whatever that goes, uh, will go. And he didn't allude to the fact that he wanted to be the chairperson, but he told my senior colleague here yeah, a different story. So one has to wait and see how these dynamics will, now, will, will unfold just before the ANC prepares for its policy conference and, of course, the National Electoral Conference. Well, definitely something to uh, pay mind to Pule, as you're saying there with Spamal Dagoge, describing this season of the African National Congress as silly season. It is a wait-and-see game, all to say. Very interesting political dynamics that are unfolding there in uh, Limpopo province indeed. Well, from